Okay, I finally have a Singer Heavy Duty machine here that is out of time. And this is the Singer Classic. So I did a little test a little while ago and uh, it looks like the hook's out of time. Generally when the hook's out of time, the needle is out of time too. Because when they go down in a jam, sometimes the needle will slip and it makes it a little bit higher than what needs to be. So it's kind of a balancing act when you do this and we will go through you know what you need to do to get the hook in time. That'll be doing uh, things on the bottom of the machine and then we'll take this uh, side piece off here and I'll show you how to adjust the needle uh, height also. Uh, let me go through kind of what you need to do this. Uh, I've got some tools here that you're going to need to get. And I will cut to these in just a minute. I'm trying to get them all organized here. Anyway, um, we'll go through that in just a minute. <clears throat> Anyway, so I'm going to go through all that and try to show you step by step how to remove the bottom cover and keep everything organized so you can get it back together. Uh, this is not anything to be afraid of. It's fairly easy to do. You just need the correct tools to do the job and uh, we'll go through that next. So let's get on with it. Okay, got it focused. Triflow Grease, all this stuff's available on Amazon that I'm going to show you and I'm going to put links, they're going to be affiliate links, so if you click on them I'll make a few pennies off of it, but you won't be charged any extra. Anyway, uh, Triflow, uh, it's clear synthetic grease. This is the machine oil you can get just about anywhere. Uh, Walmart, Joanne stores, local sewing centers seem to carry this. Uh, you can also order it off Amazon. A small screwdriver, you can get this. I'll post a set that's a straight and a Phillips. You need these angle screwdrivers because these screws can be hard to get out and these make it a whole lot easier. Um, it's not so much important getting them off, although it's important, but when you put them back on, you need to really tighten them up because uh, you'll see when you start pulling them off how hard they are to get off, how tight they are at the factory. Need a Phillips head screwdriver. I'm going to use my drill uh, with a screwdriver attachment on it to get it off. And then these are hex wrenches. You need these three. Uh, we're only going to use two of them, but there's a third one that when you start making other adjustments on the machine that you'll need. So you need a 1.5, a 2, and a 2.5. So these three are what you need for everything on the machine to make the adjustments. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and use a headlamp here once we get under here and start working on it because it's all black in there. And uh, if your lighting's suspect, you can get these at all the big box hardware stores and they're like 10 bucks or something like that. So anyway, I get that if you need it. Okay, that's it. Um, let me get the uh, side off of it real quickly and uh, then I'll flip it over and take off the bottom. I'll reposition the camera for that. Let me get this stuff out of the way. First thing you're going to want to do is unscrew the screw on the side. Get this side cover off. And once you get it loose, just kind of pull up on it. And it'll come off. you got to kind of raise up. Leave that screw in there so that when you're ready to put it on, it'll be ready to go. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take the cover off the bobbin here. So we'll need to do that next. Uh, let me, give me a second, let me get the camera repositioned so I can show this better. Okay. We're going to take the bobbin uh, cover, case cover off here. And so let's go ahead and pop the cover off, set that aside, take a little screwdriver here. And this is why these are so great. You can actually take these screws out very quickly with them. 
they fit underneath the machine. Now that one's really tight. There it goes. Sorry, I know my hand's in the way, but I'm just unscrewing the screw on the top here. Okay. Got that out of the way. So now let's pull this off. Leave the screws in that. That way you're not hunting for them and set it down. Okay, go ahead and take the bobbin out. Set it aside. And these two screws here are the ones we're going to loosen up. Loosen this up to get the bobbin out of the machine. So let's turn this. And that's where these screwdrivers are very helpful just to get these broken loose because they're very tight. If you try to get that little screwdriver in there, this one's really tight. There we go. Anyway, once you loosen them up with that, you can get the little screwdriver in. You don't need to take this all the way out. Just loosen it up. And then pull it out just a little bit more. And there's our bobbin. So we have it out. Okay. Now. The first thing we're going to look at is see kind of what's going on here. So let me get the needle threaded. Okay. Now, let me make sure you can see what's going on here. Okay. So now you're going to see this is the hook right here. And that's what grabs a hold of the thread as you turn the machine around. And I can already see that needle is out of time too. Yeah, see the hook's coming by the back of the needle right there. And that needle should be lower where the thread can catch it. It doesn't look like it's going low enough. Now, if you look at the senior uh, service manual, they'll give you the specs for the measurements on this. And I'm going to show you how to do it without doing all the specs. So take it down. And what I'm noticing is it needs to go down just a little bit more. So I've got two things going on here. I've got the needle is off a little bit needs to be lowered probably about an eighth of an inch on the stroke down and then the hook is off also so that's uh let me reposition the camera i'm going to turn it over and we're going to take the bottom off of it so we can get to the area to get that adjusted uh, the other thing you need that i forgot to tell you paper towels because you may get your hands a little bit dirty when you're doing this so let me get it set up and i'll get the machine turned over and I'll show you how to take the bottom off of it. Okay, I've turned the machine over. So the first thing we're going to do is take out this screw here, this screw here, these two screws, and these two screws. There's two, four, six screws in all. So what I'd encourage you to do is take a picture of this with your cell phone before you take it out. But when you take it out, you're going to put the screws right back in the holes that they go in also. And that'll help you get it back on there very quickly. So I'm going to use my electric drill. scooting on me as I'm doing this. And these two right here will be the last two. Okay. There we go. 
Now what I'm going to do is when I take it off, I'm going to put these screws right back in the holes that they came out of. So I'm going to set it down here and you're going to have four screws that are the same size that go in the front pieces here. And then you're going to have a littler screw that goes in the right side that I took out. So there we go. I've got this screw back in, that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. So I'll set that down with those screws in it. That way I don't have to worry about where they go. And we need to take bottom tray off and it's going to expose these two screws right here so we can take those off just use a standard screwdriver here got my headlamp on so I can see once I get this off and more importantly so you can see because it gets so dark and inside the machines Okay, just take that off, leave those screws inside so you don't have to figure out where they go. All right, now this area right here is what we're going to have to loosen up to adjust the hook. So what we will do is we will take our number, let's see here, I think it's the number 2.5 or it's the 2. Let me see if this one fits. Nope, it's the 2, not the 2.5. Yep, that's it. All right, let me make sure that we're in focus real quick. All right, got you a little bit closer here. Hopefully you can see what's going on with this headlamp on. So the, this is the size 2 uh, Torx. And as I rotate this around, you're going to see there's one, two, three screws. And you're going to see when we start uh, lubing this gear up, you see how the grease has kind of come off. That's pretty common. And then it leaves these areas here dry. So that's why you got to kind of check them every once in a while. This machine so so fast that when it gets going, it'll throw if they put too much grease on it off. So. They kind of lubed it up quite a bit at the factory, it looks like. Uh, see a little bit of dirt in there I'm going to have to clean out. Anyway, back to the subject. We need to loosen these up so that we can turn the hook. And it's going to seem like you're loosening them too much. And for some reason on these Singer Heavy Duty machines, this hook is on this shaft really tight. And a lot of the machines, I just loosen these two and then leave the other one a little bit tight and I can rotate it around. Okay, that's really bugging me. It's a piece of lint. There we go. All right, so loosen these up. I mean, don't, you need to turn them about a full turn because if you don't, it binds. All right, that one's really tight. All right, got that one broke loose. Let's go ahead and loosen it up. Okay, now I'm going to stick, stick this in the post and see if that will turn freely, and it is, and that's what you want. You want it loose so that you can adjust the uh, bobbin timing. Okay, I'm going to flip it over now, and when you do that, you have to kind of be careful as there's a grease right there, so I'm going to put my, my 
pressing block underneath it to hold the end up. So let me do that and uh, I'll bring you back and we'll start adjusting it. Okay, I'm focusing in on this area right here and this right here. Now you'll need the little 1.5 Torx to loosen the top one. I'm trying to get it out. If you need to loosen that one to make the adjustment, uh, you'll use the 1.5 Torx. You may have to loosen it. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Just depends. Oh, let me get my feet out from under me. Anyway, so I'm going to loosen this. When I say loosen the needle bar to adjust it, I'm going to loosen that a bit. You really like to try to keep it tight enough where you can pull on it and make the adjustment, but sometimes it's impossible. So I'm going to see if this one will hold when I loosen it up a little bit. Get my light around here where I can see. And I've braced this up on my Okay, that one just came right down real quickly. So, all right. <clears throat> I'm going to see if I can tighten it up a little bit. I really don't, don't want it that loose. I'm pulling down on it. I want it to have some friction on it. Man. Thing is really goes from tight to, to loose. That's why I'm saying sometimes you can't slightly loosen it. Okay, I'm going to go up a little bit and see if I can. Okay, well, it's loosening up as I move it. Give this one more try and then we'll move on. I've got it at that position there. All right, so what I'm going to look for here, all right, here. We've got the camera about as close as I can get it, so hopefully you'll be able to see what's going on here. Okay, we bring the needle up, hold on the thread, kind of hold it over the needle the way it will be. And it's going down and the hook is nowhere near it. So I'm just going to bring it up just a little bit. Then now this hook is loose now where I can grab it and I can turn it and get it in position. So what I'm going to do is get it about where it needs to be. And that's about right. It's right I'm going to come back just a little bit. far back. need to advance it a little bit. And it grabbed it there. Come back around. Let it come around. This time I'm going to try to hold it up some because it does make a difference. Because that's kind of how it will be when it goes through. And that grabbed it. So now I'm going to look at the depth of the needle. And the needle depth looks okay now. Now we need to check the widest zigzag. So set our, the whole time I've been doing this, the length has been set on zero. So you want to go set to length zero. Go to a zigzag stitch and put it on six. Make sure your needle position's in the center. 
So the length is 6. We've got it on zigzag and the stitch length is 0. So now we're going to see if it catches the thread when the needle swings back and forth because it works on the straight stitch. See what happens now when we're going over here to the widest stitch. Okay, it got that one. Let's see if it gets this one. It didn't, but the thread was so loose. Let's try that again. Got to hang on to it. Give it a little bit of tension. Okay, it got it on the left swing. Now the right swing. And it got it on the right swing. Okay, now I'm going to look at how close it is on that right swing. Because the left swing... It's getting there maybe just a tad late. Let me see what goes on on this side this time. Okay, I'm going to advance it just a real small amount, about right there. And that's it. <clears throat> All right. Now that I've done that, I'm going to tighten the needle clamp if I can get to it. Now this can be a problem because when you're trying to do that, it's down low and everything's in the way. So I'm going to go ahead and slowly rotate it up. And I'll have to verify that it didn't move. And so I'm going to go up here and I'm going to tighten it. Helps if I use the right tool. Grab the wrong one. Sorry guys, I'm trying not to hit the camera as I do this. Alright, now it's tightened up slightly. Now I'm going to really tighten it up. Alright, now I've got the needle tightened up. Now I'll reposition the camera. We're going to flip it over. And uh, we're going to tighten up the uh, shaft on the bobbin uh, case now. So we'll do that next. So hang on, let me get it set back up. Okay, now we need to tighten this up. You need to be very gentle and just turn. Make sure you don't reposition this when you do it. So just slightly tighten each one. Rotate it around. Get the next one. And again, when you're putting the machine down, do it very gently. We don't want to jog anything loose while we're doing this. Because it will move. Okay, I've got that one just slightly tight. I'll do this third one. And I can tighten it down more. And then I'll go tighten the other ones. Okay, when you tighten these, you got to really tighten them up. So, I have to get this up here where I can turn it. Okay, make sure that thing stays in and then pull on it really tightly. Okay, here's that one. on it the machine is trying to push and you'll hear it kind of click into place when it gets good and tight okay here's the next one and oh by the way before you tighten the first one you want to push over on this a little bit to make sure it's engaged with the the gear that it needs to tie into I don't want to hear that click there it goes. All right, now we're going to turn it over and check and see if it stitches correctly. So let me do that real quickly. I'll reset up, show you what's going on. Hopefully it'll be fixed. Three, two, one. 
Okay, got to put the bobbin back in. Bobbin case. If you want to turn it, let me turn a little lot on here, where you can see. You want to turn it to that little piece stays to the left of this piece here. And what we're going to do is hold this while we tighten it up because it tends to want to move around a little bit so just kind of want to hold it up and kind of to the to this side of the machine when you're doing this because if you don't sometimes the thread will get caught on it when it comes around so you learn this stuff through experience all right i just barely tighten those up now i'm going to come in with these angled screwdrivers we can really get down in there and tighten those up and then rock it make sure it looks good that looks good put the cover back on screw the screws in I got that one in. Let's see if I can start this one on my fingers first. Yeah. So so handy about these little screwdrivers. No hands in the way. Hopefully you can see some of that now. Just tighten that up. That's good and tight. Now we need to put... I had the machine unplugged the whole time. Just by the way, make sure you unplug it before you start taking all that stuff apart. Alright, we are threaded up and ready to go. So let's get our test fabric. Use the same one since the other one didn't didn't work. Okay, got all my thread there. Let's see what we get. We are going to do the wide zigzag first. Hang on, let me get my thread untangled here. Okay, we'll do the wide zigzag. Let's set our stitch length to two, six, and it's in zigzag mode. So we'll see what happens. And if you have a problem, this is one that will show itself. It'll skip a stitch or something. So see what happens. And we did skip a stitch right there. So we're still a little bit off. So I'm going to go ahead and make one more run with it here and make sure I reproduce it. Cut my threads. It's always a good idea on these machines to hold these threads to the back when you start stitching. Because if they're going to have a problem, it'll be initially, and that's when they get that nest underneath it. Tension's four. Okay, this is good. Yep, that thread is catching on that left hook. So, that's when you end up with that right there. So, let me show you how to fix that, because that's a common problem. 
what it is is when you take and it didn't skip a stitch then so that's why I test it again I'll test it several times before I call it good because sometimes when you do that first test for whatever reason it'll skip one all right <clears throat> let me show you what's going on down here Okay, sorry guys, it was getting hot in here. I turned the ceiling fan on. So it's getting humid. Summer here, so. All right, let's take the bobbin out. Screw back in. Cover here. All righty, now. The thread seemed to be getting caught when it was coming around here. So what I'm going to do, I tighten that down a whole lot. I'm going to go ahead and loosen this up just about a quarter of a turn. See what it does now when it comes around. Okay, that went through there good that time. Let's try the other side. Okay, that seems to be a lot smoother. better. All right, I'm going to check my timing one more time to see if I'm seeing anything slipped slightly when I was tightening things up because all it takes is a little bit to cause a problem. So that looks good. Let me try the next one here. Mm, that one missed. So that one is missing. So loosen this. That means something possibly changed. So I need to get this bobbin case out so I can see what's going on. It's either the needle or it's this timing got off a little bit when I turned it over and was tightening it up. So let me see what's going on here. Yep, it moved just a little bit late. And there's tension on it. This side over here then is probably going to be a little bit earlier now. Yep. All right. So what I'm going to do is loosen this again and slowly move that back over again. It's got to go back this way. Just about, oh God, a sixteenth of an inch. And it's a get. It's kind of a thing you got to go back and forth because um, if you over loosen this, which I had to do, it can move a little bit when you're tightening up, or this can move a little bit and you just tighten it up. I had this a little bit too loose, so this time 
I'm not going to have it as loose as I did the last time and I'm going to move that over so I'm not going to show doing it because I'm just going to loosen it and move it just hair a hair and then tighten it back up but I'm going to get it try to keep it a lot tighter this time where it's hard for me to move it a little bit harder not as easy that way it'll stay in place when I tighten it up so let me do that real quick and uh, we'll give it a try okay I made a slight adjustment to the hook and then I had to make a very slight adjustment to the height of the needle for it to catch on the zigzag just right and the straight stitch so we're going to try the zigzag okay tension at four needle position is in the middle width at six length at 2.5 and zigzag so let's hold the thread tails here and let's see how it does We don't have any skip stitches. Okay, those stitches look good. Look good on the back. Tension may be just a tad tight, but on the top it appears pulling a little bit too much. So, anyway, I also had to adjust the bobbin tension, it was way tight for some reason and so sometimes people start adjusting them when things go wrong and get everything out of whack but anyway i had to loosen the bobbin tension and so let's try to go back to a straight stitch now see if it handles that okay Really need to put the side on the machine. This thing's on the top here because come on, snap in place. There it goes. Go ahead and tighten it down. That thread starts looping around all the pieces on here and it gets it off so test it right make sure everything's still flowing good there we go Yeah, the thread caught on top, pulled the tension really tight right there, so let me retry it. It's always good to fully assemble the thing before you test it, prevent those kind of things from happening. So, thread from there, found the bobbin thread, get everything pulled to the back of the machine. And here we go. There we go. No skip stitches. That's for me not holding onto the bottom thread real tight when I took off. Okay, so that looks good. The tension looks a little bit tighter. Get this last piece here and we'll do a double layer on this one. Let's see how it looks. Let's try another stitch. Let's try... This one's going to be kind of a wavy stitch, so let's let us stress it out and see how it does. 
Guess I need to set a width. Okay, that looks good. Try one more. This is like the blind hem stitch. So the needle needle will swing over. It'll do straight a few stitches, then swing over. So let's see how it does that one. not feeding. Uh, I got a single layer on the edge there and started stitching. Sucked it down on the throat plate. So let me try this again. See if I can get it under the foot good this time. This problem with standing over it. I can't see it very well down there. So let's try it again. Okay, there's our blind hem on the top and bottom, and I think we've got it. I'll go ahead and try one more. Go ahead and do a stretch stitch here and see how it does. stitch looks good on top and good on bottom I think we've got it fixed all right let's review what we did basically it was a case where the hook was out of time and the needle wasn't going down far enough so I loosened the point on the needle I showed you I went down first time I think I went a little bit too far and then I had to bring it up again just a little bit and then back down a little bit it's a balancing game and uh, then I had to advance the hook just a little bit after that. And that got us kind of where we are now. Uh, I took the bobbin out and cleaned that area uh, just with a brush. And to get it clean, it had a little bit of lint in it. So I got that clean. And then after I did that, I put a drop of oil down in the bobbin.
Okay, we're going to grease the gear. This is the main one that needs to be greased up. And I think I told you earlier that I noticed, and I've also got the oil here too, so we're going to oil it. But when you've got the bottom off, it's a good time to go ahead and take care of this. And I told you how that was there. We've got a couple of Q-tips here to help us get through this. So... Put a little bit of grease on the Q-tip, rotate the hand wheel, find the areas that are looking like they're lacking a little bit of grease. Just kind of rub it in. You don't want to blot it on there the way they do at the factory sometimes. Just getting a little bit of grease on each one of those wheel cogs of the gear and that has grease all the way around it now it looks good okay you can go ahead and put a little bit on this gear right here looks like what's on it's a little bit dirty so I'm going to go ahead and clean it up with my q-tip Yeah, it looks old. Got there a lot of Q-tips on this. I'm trying to clean it up, but it's worth it. See some old grease right there. Starting to age. It starts darkening. And it starts getting older. Alright, that's pretty clean. Just gonna apply a little bit more. Looks like whoever greased it up the last time they kind of overdid it. Doesn't take that much on that little spindle. Okay, that should do it. Looking pretty good. I'm going to hit it with just a tiny bit more. And then there's a little spot down here where you'll see a little gear rubbing up and down. You can go and hit that with some new grease. That looks good. Okay, now we've done the greasing, the rest of it's just oiling. So, <clears throat> you've got a felt pad right here that will transfer the oil there. So, just get it damp with oil. And back here, I see anywhere where you see metal to metal rubbing, just one drop is all it takes. That area there, and then this area right here, I'm going to go ahead and give that felt some fresh oil. Just dampen it, don't need to soak it. And then I'm going to hit this little area right here with some too. Okay, this area right here is metal to metal. Put a drop there. Okay. 
Got a lot of bubbles. Let me extend this some. There we go. Do a drop here. And one drop right here. All right, you can't see it, but back here is a little spindle that's metal to metal. I'm going to put an old drop on it. And just look around. Anything you see moving that's metal to metal, put a drop on it. And a drop on that last spindle. And that is it. It's greased and old now. Everything looks good. So, I'm going to put the bottom back on it. And uh, then we'll pull the top off. And uh, I'll show you that area you need to do also. Okay, I thought I'd go ahead and show you the order that I put the bottom back on. I put this piece on first. And it'll clip right into place. Again, we left the screws in the place that they were taken off. It makes it a whole lot easier to put it back together. Okay, that one's there. Now we did the same thing with the other one. Left all the screws in it. So just line it up. And it'll start pushing the screws out once you get it lined up. these two down here in here first. There's that one. There's that one. that one you've got two holes here that don't have anything in them so don't let that confuse you okay now I'll go back and tighten each one up Yep, forgot this one. Tighten that one. So there's six of them in all. And you got one of the feet here that doesn't come off, like this one on the top does. Let's get the bottom back on it. We're good there. Okay, we'll turn it over. <clears throat> and get this thread out of here. Okay, to remove the top, there are two screws right here that we're going to take out do that and then I'm going to reposition the camera so you can see the top. Three, two, one. Okay, we need to grease this gear right here next. So I will grease that after I've oiled it so you can see the places where you do the oiling. Again, you're looking for any metal to metal. So put some of the grease on your Q-tip and rub it around that, that metal gear. All right, so we're going to turn the hand wheel towards the front. This is the back of the machine. And <clears throat> I 
drop some oil in the areas that are metal to metal. We have metal to metal right here. We have metal to metal right here where it's turning. Some oil there. Metal to metal right here on the rocker arm. I took the side of the front the side of the machine off again so I could get to these areas from up here. And the only other area I go ahead and put a drop of oil is right here in between the plastic hand wheel where it drops down where that shaft is. And that's pretty much it on top. You, you can put a drop of oil in these areas right here. And now let me flip it around <clears throat> so you can see this side. Make sure we're focused on it. Okay. All right. Anywhere where we see metal, right here. I'm going to put it on the top side and down here on the bottom and then just turn the hand wheel and it'll work it through all those joints and I already oiled this from the top side and that looks good yeah I oiled this stuff up here from the top side. So I've got all that taken care of. And that is pretty much it. So that'll get it old. And anywhere where you see old oil and grease, go ahead and take a Q-tip or a paper towel or something and clean that old oil and grease off. This one looked pretty good. Uh, but if you see any dark oil of any kind, uh, as it starts getting kind of dirty looking, that's the stuff you need to clean off. Uh, but anyway, that's how you oil it real quickly. It's good to do that while you've got it apart, and that way it'll run good. So uh, I'll go ahead and put it back together and test it out, and I think we'll be good to go. So anyway, hopefully this helped you guys out. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, and I'll be happy to answer them. And that's it for now, so take care.